Welcome again. Right now we're at 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 6 through 18. We are to fulfill. And don't forget, we just came from the passage of Scripture where Paul was talking about the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, are not of this world, are not of the flesh, but the weapons of our warfare is spiritual. We are to wage war first and foremost, spiritually speaking, within our own selves to make sure that every reckoning, every reasoning, every judgment, and every thought that we have is in accordance to the law and the will and the ways of God. Picking right up from there, Paul says this, and being in readiness to avenge all disobedience, avenge all disobedience, we are to wage war on disobedience. Paul doesn't say here, well, we're all just human and we're all going to fail and, you know, we, we can't obey everything, you know, so disobedience is natural. No, we are supposed to avenge. We are supposed to wage war against all disobedience. When your obedience is made full, so our obedience is supposed to be made full. The word made full there in the King James Version is fulfilled. So we are to fulfill all obedience. So our obedience supposed to be fulfilled. Now that is a very, very interesting word because it is the same word that Jesus used when he said, I don't come to abolish the law. I come to fulfill it. It is the Greek word pleiotro. So it means to cause God's will as made known in the law, to be obeyed as it should be. That is what one of Christianity's most trusted sources of Greek definitions, Thayer's Greek lexicon, says about that. To cause God's will, as made known in the law, to be obeyed as it should be. It doesn't mean to, you know, complete it and, you know, now it's done, it's over with, you know, so Jesus fulfilled the law so we don't have to fulfill anymore. Jesus obeyed so that we don't have to obey anymore. No, Paul made it very clear here. We too are to fulfill the law. We too are to obey just as Jesus did. We too are to play ra'o. We are to be obedient to God's laws and to walk in obedience to fulfill. A lot of people today don't understand that when they read in the New Testament, when they read in the Bible, the word fulfill, it is translated from different words in the original, okay? So the word fulfill in one instance can mean, yeah, you know, that prophecy was fulfilled, it was completed, it's done. In another instance, that word fulfill Plerao doesn't mean it's done. It means it's a continual thing. It means you got to keep on doing it. It is obedience. It is plerao. It is causing God's will as made known in the law to be obeyed as it should be. So just because Jesus obeyed the law doesn't mean that we don't have to because it says he fulfilled the law in play raoing the law so to speak it doesn't mean that we don't have to in fact it's the opposite if we follow jesus you know what would jesus do he obeyed the law. He obeyed his father. And likewise, we are to obey the father as well. We are to play ra'o. And finally, while we're on this word fulfilled, you need to understand and don't forget the context here. Jesus was 100% Jewish. He was the Jewish Messiah in a very Jewish culture, in a Jewish nation. And this Jew said that he is not to abolish the law, but to fulfill it. Ask any practicing Jew today, especially the Orthodox Jews, as they are the Jewish people who are supposed to be living according to the old ways. Ask any Orthodox Jew today that's practicing. Go up to them and say, Sir, can I ask you a question? Do you fulfill the Torah? Do you fulfill the law of God? And if they're a practicing Jew, I guarantee you, they will respond by saying, Yes, Absolutely, we do fulfill the Torah. We fulfill the law of God. That does not mean that they abolish it, that they burn it up or throw it out, that they bring it to an end. That simply means, again, that they obey it. And that is exactly what Jesus meant. And that is what Paul said we are supposed to do here in this age. When your obedience is made full, fulfilled, do you look at things only as they appear in front of your face? If anyone trusts in himself that he is Christ, that he belongs to Christ, let him consider this again with himself, 
that even as he is Christ, so we also are Christ. For even if I boast somewhat abundantly concerning our authority, which the Lord gave for building you up and not for casting you down, I will not be ashamed that I may not seem as if I desire to terrify you by my letters. For his letters, they say, are weighty and strong, but his bodily presence is weak and his speech is despised. Paul was not a very good orator. He was not a very good speaker. He made that very clear in the first letter to the Corinthians. He said, I don't come with eloquency of speech. So he was not very uh, presentable. He looked weak. He didn't speak very well. And it is notable that God does often use people that can't speak very well. Consider Moses. The real true Moses of the Bible certainly wasn't like anything that we see in the Ten Commandments movie today. Very few people could actually even understand him. He had to have his brother actually speak for him because he couldn't even speak. So God uses people that really have a problem speaking. And he uses those people in a very, very powerful way. Let such a person consider this, that what we are in words by letter when we are absent, such are we also indeed when we are present. For we are not bold to number or compare ourselves with some of those who commend themselves, but they themselves, measuring themselves by themselves and comparing themselves with themselves, are without understanding. But we will not boast beyond proper limits, but within the boundaries with which God appointed to us, which reach even to you. For we don't stretch ourselves too much, as though we didn't reach to you. For we came even as far as to you with the good news, with the gospel of Christ, of the Messiah." not boasting beyond proper limits in other men's labors, but having hope that as your faith grows, we will be abundantly enlarged by you in our sphere of influence, so as to preach the good news, even to the parts beyond you, not to boast in what someone else has already done. For he who boasts, let him boast in the Lord. And again, Paul quotes the Tanakh. Jeremiah who? Jeremiah chapter 9 verse 24. For it isn't he who commends himself who is approved, but whom the Lord commends. And it's my prayer that the Lord commends every one of you. As you go, seek him with all your heart. And if you do, you will find him. Call upon him and he will show you great and mighty things. Love you guys.